This one might be a little difficult as a resting logo, but you know, we'll see. And this one would be a little bit trickier to animate. Um, so we'd have to try a couple things to see what works best, but this one might be a little bit easier to do. That's, that's pretty funny though. I like that. If Diano hops on late, oh, I forgot to send out the link of what we're doing tonight, but that's okay. I could do it at the end of class as well, because like I said, all the lectures are pre-recorded. Okay. So I'm going to do a quick recap of last week, just that, you know, that's what we're always going to do so that no one's starting off cold. So let me delete these two and I'll just use a square. Whenever you put in a layer, you could always twirl down and there's your stopwatches for your four main pillars of motion design. It's position, scale, rotation, opacity, or you could select the layer and hit P, S, R, T to pull those up, save yourself some space. Uh, you always start off by thinking about what you want to do, then you figure out how you want to do it. So for this, I'm going to have a circle actually so that we could go straight from the recap into something new okay so i'm going to have a circle and i'm going to want it to scale up from zero to 100 and then back down to zero again and i'm going to want my anchor point at the center for this animation so i use the black arrow to move my shape around, just like in Illustrator and Photoshop. The pan behind tool, right next to your shapes, that's where you change the anchor point. And if you're not able to change the anchor point, click off the shape layer, then click back on it. Um, if you hold down Command or Control, it'll snap to a corner, a center, or an edge for more precision. And I think the final person just arrived oops give me a second all right so i'm just doing a quick recap of last week so all i did was i moved the anchor point and remember the anchor point will influence the animation i want this to scale out from the center so i know what i want to do and i move the anchor point i then move the playhead to where i want the animation to start and i click on the stopwatch that i'm going to do and for this it's going to be scale so I'm going to go and I'm going to use the empty keyframe button there to add a keyframe and then just go back and change the values myself. So I've got my three keyframes and I'm going to want to go from zero. Here's your previous and next. I'm going from zero to 100 and I'm just selecting the keyframe and changing it back to zero. So that is my motion for now and I'm going to tighten this up by moving my render bar down and you just hit the space bar to preview your animation now is there any question about that workflow you click a stopwatch that'll place a keyframe where you want it then you move this the playhead and you make changes and that's how you get your motion design over time is everyone good with that good all right so just going to do one more I'll draw a sh uh, thing here and with this second shape I'm going to do rotate and I'm going to want to rotate from the corner so I move my anchor point I'm going to hide the first shape just so I don't confuse anybody and I'm going to want my rotating to start here I'm going to hit R for rotate click the stopwatch remember if you click the stopwatch a second time you lose your keyframes I'm going to move it a little bit go forward again start going in the opposite direction go back a little go a little past and then stop it at zero you can have as many keyframes as you want but you need at least two keyframes and they have to be at least one frame apart the further they are apart, the slower the change will be. The closer they are, the faster the change will be. So that's just another 
demonstration of that workflow. So now we'll get deeper into it. And we're going to go back to our circle. If you hit the U key, that'll pull all the stopwatches you keyframed. So we have this simple scaling up and down. Now we're going to start learning the speed graph. So do what I did. You know, just have a quick circle going from scaling up from 0 to 100, then down to 0, those three keyframes. And when you've got that done, just say done. For this whole semester, we're going to be, I went to composition, composition settings or new composition, 1920 by 1080 square pixels, 24 frame rate. And we're just going to set this for seven period zero zero for seven seconds tonight, but your homework will be 10 seconds or longer. So it's got to be seven period zero zero or else you'll just be doing seven frames, not seven seconds. So it's 1920 by 1080 square pixels, 24 frames, then seven seconds long. And I just scaled up zero to 100 to zero. And everybody just make sure caps lock is not on. If caps lock is on, you cannot preview your animations. Okay, so my keyframes, everyone's keyframes should be diamonds. That's the default keyframe, and that's a linear keyframe. That's a, It does not accelerate or decelerate. It's the same speed. That'd be like the second hand on a clock or a gear turning. It's an example of mechanical motion. We're going to change these into something more organic. See, it's a constant speed we have right now. Okay, so you go from 0 to 100 to 0. So, like I said, right now we've got linear keyframes. This is a constant speed. It's not slowing down or speeding up. To change these, you got one of two ways. You can select one, you know, but we're going to select all of them and make them the same. You could either click down here and box select, or you can click on the word scale. Remember, if you click the stopwatch a second time, you lose all your keyframes. If you click on the word for that stopwatch, you select all the keyframes for that stopwatch. Now I'll show you how to do this next part, and then um, you can follow along to my voice. Just pick any keyframe, hover over it with your mouse, right click, and you'll go keyframe assistant, easy ease. So you hover over, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And your diamonds should turn into little hourglass shapes. And now you'll see a change in your animation. It's no longer as consistent. Yeah, no problem. So you select your keyframes either by box selecting or clicking on the word scale. Do you have all of them selected? The hot, the highlight blue. So you have your mouse hover over one of them. You have to be hovered over one of them. Then you right click and choose keyframe assistant, easy ease. You could also hit the F9 key on your keyboard. Easy eased keyframes are one of the 12 principles of animation. That principle of animation is called slow in, slow out. We're slowing out of this first keyframe, building up speed to the middle, and then slowing down into the next keyframe, and then doing the same thing, slowing out of here, building up speed to the middle, and then slowing down again. By your timeline, right here is the graph editor tool. So with your keyframe still selected, click the button for the graph editor, please. Everyone's computer is different, okay? So I'm gonna show you all something real quick, so just make sure you're watching. There's the eyeball icon down at the bottom. Next to the eyeball icon is a little graph sheet. You click on that, this is how you can change between the value graph and the speed graph. You're gonna want edit speed graph. The value graph is the value of what's happening, how much scaling is going on. This is not the velocity, this is how much of the animation is happening, how much scaling. The speed graph, this shows the velocity in and out of the keyframes. So 
just click on that thing and make sure you're at edit speed graph. When everyone's at the speed graph, just say yes. The next button I want you to look at is down here near the end, fit all graphs to view. It'll give you a much better look at your speed graph. Was everyone able to magnify their speed graph? And if at some point you lose the graph, that just means you, you're not selected your keyframes again. So you just click the word scale to see the graph again. It's right here, fit all graphs to view. It's next to the magnifying glass. Okay, so now you're magnified. You'll see three red dots. Those are your keyframes. Click on the one at the far left. Just click once on it and you'll see a yellow square and a string with a yellow ball at the end. Did everyone get that? Click on the red keyframe at the far left and then see if you get that. And make sure you have your black arrow tool. Like that should be once you, you know, set your anchor point. I always go back to my black arrow tool. All right, now the yellow square, this is your keyframe. And if you move this up or down, it will change the amount of what's happening, not the speed, okay? So that would be the scaling. If I move this up, it will no longer scale out from one uh, from 0%, it'll, it'll change the value. So I do not wanna move the yellow square. I wanna move the handle at the end. This is called the influence handle. So if you grab the yellow ball, start to drag, and then hold down shift after you start to drag, you'll see it change. Give it a try and let me know if you're able to move just the yellow ball straight across. When you move it further away from the keyframe, you're slowing out. You're making it slow out much more. And then this right here is the maximum height. So now let's look at my animation. See how it took much longer for it to scale up. If you move it closer towards the keyframe, you're speeding very quickly out of it. See how quickly it's scaled up right there. So I want you to experiment with that. This is how you get your own stylized motion right here. I'm going to move a little faster out and I'm going to go a little slower into the second one. So I'm going faster out of here and then slower into here. If you're very good, you don't have to. Like, I always drag first. See what happens if you don't? Yes, that's why I hold down shift after I start dragging. Now, if I go to the extreme slowest out of here, and then the extreme slowest out of it, so it's going very slow into it and very slow out of it, it's gonna look like the ball hangs in midair for a second. See, that's part of changing your velocity. And then I'm just going to speed into the last one because it's going to fall faster than it rises. That's why I've got it going faster and then slower. See, that's a completely different animation than where we started off at. To get out of the speed graph, you just click the graph editor button again. And I'm completely zoomed into my timeline. So this slider down here is how you zoom in and out of your timeline. I'm just going to zoom back out of my timeline. Here's what we're going to do. Select your shape layer with the circle we just scaled up. And then we're going to hit Command D or Control D. So I'm hitting Command D or Control D just once. And that duplicates my shape layer. Okay, now hit the U key. And you'll notice, not only did we copy the shape, we copied the keyframes, if I click on the word scale and go to my shape layer, I mean my speed graph, we also copied the speed graph. When you duplicate something in After Effects, you're going to duplicate your keyframes, your velocity graph, and any effects you have on it, okay? So I'm going to change the color of this from red to blue and click OK. I did that by clicking the thumbnail of the color next to the word fill. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this second layer and just slide it a little bit down my timeline. So it's no longer butting up at the beginning. So if I hit the space bar now, I see two different circles come in at different times. This is offsetting my animation. So I'm going to grab the top one. Whatever's on top in your timeline will be what you see at the topmost. 
I'm going to hit Command D one more time. And I'm going to slide this a few frames down. And I'm going to change the color to black to match the background. So now it's going to look like there's a hole happening at the end as it disappears. Command D to duplicate it and then slide it down a little bit so it comes in later. You could always slide them around and change the timing to get a different look. It's all up to you as the designer. To duplicate a layer, Command D. That will duplicate everything that comes with that layer. All right, perfect. That's the first thing I wanted to go over. You all pick that up pretty nicely. Now I've got, I just deleted those. I'm going to make a yellow square. Okay. So everyone just make a yellow square. I'm your client and I want this to open up like an elevator door going from left to right, like opening out towards the right. Where would you put the anchor point for that? Well, if we put it on the right, it'll move in the opposite direction. We want it to come out from the left and cover the towards the right. Think of it as the left door of an elevator. Now, if we were doing the right door of the elevator, then I'd put it on the right. Yeah, anywhere on the left. I'm going to hold down command and just snap it to the middle left. Now, what would you do to make this look like an elevator door opening? What stopwatch would you use? Yes, yes, you are correct. It is scale, but you have to non-uniformly scale. So click off the chain. Click the word scale, you know, move your playhead to where you want it to be, which is mine's going to be right here. And I'm going to make the first number, the first number is side to side, second number is up and down. I'm going to change the first number to zero. Then I'm just going to move my playhead, let's just say one second, and then change that zero to 100 by typing in it. And now I've got that elevator door opening. Let me know if you've got that. No problem. So I move the playhead to where I want it to start and I click on the stopwatch for scale. And I clicked off the chain so that it's going to be non-uniform scaling. The first number is side to side. I changed the first number to zero. So it's saying zero comma 100. Then I'm just going to move my playhead to the one second mark and change that zero to a 100. So now it's going to scale only on the side the x-axis, like an elevator door closing. I'm going to click on the word scale, hover over one of my keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, because I'm going to go into my speed graph editor. Was everyone able to easy ease their keyframes? So I'm going to click on the speed graph editor with my keyframe still selected, click the fit to view, and I'm going to want to, I'm going to go slower out at the beginning. Now see what that looks like. That's a little too fast towards the end, so I'm going to slow it out towards the end too. I'm happy with that. So that's what my elevator door is going to do. And I just click speed graph to get out of it. So everyone was able to do that. Here's where we're going to have a brain stumper. Think of what you want to do, then figure out how to do it. Well, I actually set the anchor point, then you move the play. It doesn't matter either order. But so if I move this anchor point, it'll change my motion. Okay. And I don't want that to happen because I have my motion set up. All right. So if the client says, I want this to scale out like an elevator door closing and then scale downwards all right that's what they want to do so i cannot move this anchor point right now or else it'll change the animations everyone got that you learned command d to duplicate a layer so what i want you to do is go a little bit past your second keyframe and instead of hitting command d we're going to do shift command d or you can go to edit split layer and that's going to split the layer where the time head is instead of duplicating the whole layer. So now we can move the anchor point on the top split. I'm going to put the anchor point at the bottom middle and let's just preview. See that's still working fine. So if I click S for scale on my top duplicate, 
I'm just going to add the diamond for a keyframe. Then I'll go forward like a second. And I'm going to change the second number now, the Y, to a zero. So I'm scaling out from the side and then down to the bottom. Splitting a layer is an incredibly useful skill to know how to do. For instances like this, where you need to keep a shape in a spot, but change its anchor point. It's also good for having effects start or stop when you want them to. It just gives you a lot more flexibility knowing how to split a layer. Anyone have any issues with that? I'm going to delete everything. And I'm going to make a blue star. And I'm going to put the anchor point at the middle. Let me know when you've all got a blue star. I'm going to show a little bit deeper look into shape layers now. When I've got my shape layer selected, let me go back to my black arrow tool. So if your shape layer is selected and you got the black arrow tool, you'll see add up here at the top. And you'll also see add down here by your shape layer in the timeline. Okay, now I think of a shape layer as an empty salad bowl, meaning you walk up to the salad bar and you put whatever you want inside it, okay? So in this, we've got a path, a shape, and a fill, okay? So I'm gonna go add, and let's try wiggle paths. And I'm gonna hit my space bar. Wiggle paths gave instant motion to the path shape of my shape layer. All right, now with that shape layer selected, I'm gonna hit the letter U on my keyboard to see my keyframes. Oh, okay, I think that wiggle paths is automatic, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go, in addition to that, I'm gonna go add, and I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna choose zigzag in addition to that. Now I have a zigzag down here in my contents. And anything with the stopwatch can be animated. So I'm going to click on size, add a keyframe, move my playhead, and increase the size of that. And instead of corner, let me try smooth. And let's see what that looks like. Then I'll have it go back down to zero at the end. So you can add lots of interesting elements into shape layers just by clicking add. And you can get some pretty interesting things from that. Let me know if anyone has any questions about the add feature. Okay, so this is the last new thing I'm going to show. I deleted my star. And I'm going to click on the pen tool. Now, since I'm going to draw a path, I'm going to click on the word fill. And I'm going to choose none from my fill options. That red slash through it, just like an illustrator. Then I'm going to click on the word stroke and give it a solid fill and hit OK. So I'm going to have no fill and a stroke. Let me make my stroke red. So we're just going to make a simple sloppy little curve like that. Just like some S shape thing. Let me know when you are able to draw your curve. This works exactly like the pen tool in Illustrator and Photoshop but it's much more powerful, okay? And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna twirl down my arrow. I'm gonna twirl down contents. I'm gonna twirl down shape. I'm gonna twirl down path till I get to the stopwatch for path. Let me know when you found this path stopwatch. I'm gonna click 
I'm going to move my playhead to the beginning of the timeline and then click on the stopwatch for path. OK, now I'm just going to move forward a little bit. Now, if I click on one of the key frame, one of the uh, anchor points, nothing happens. But if I hold down shift and click on one, now I can access the path point or the Bezier curve handles. You can animate your path points in After Effects. And you can also, I'm going to move forward a little bit more, you can also animate the Bezier curve handles as well. And then I'm going to play that with my spacebar. See? That is a very useful animation feature, being able to animate path points and Bezier curve handles over time. You could already picture like a bird flapping, you know, stuff like that. Now this one's a little bonus that I'm going to throw in. So you get the concept that you can animate path points and Bezier curve handles with shapes drawn in After Effects with the pen tool, okay? So I'm going to delete this and I'm going to make a more simple chord like that. So that's one way of animating the paths. Now, I believe it was Sarah. Sarah had the headphone jack with the chord. OK, now what I imagine with that chord coming down, that headphone jack's going to need to move and click into the Walkman. Okay, does everyone know what I'm saying? Okay, now I want to show you something. This is another animation technique and it'll be pretty interesting. So we're going to pay attention to this end of the path. So instead of animating my path points the way I showed you, I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to click on the path stopwatch without and without clicking it on. I'm just selecting it. I'm going to go window, create nulls from paths. That's in my window setting. So I click there and I've got three options. I'm going to choose points follow nulls. So I click on there and I can just close this window. These are these these are nulls, they're invisible. And what that means is if I grab one of them and move it, the path point follows, okay? And you might say, well, why don't we just do the last thing? Well, for Sarah's, she has a headphone jack, okay? So I'm gonna name this null. To change the name of anything in your timeline, you just hit the enter key. I'm gonna call this uh, chord end. So this is going to be my chord end null. And I'm going to draw a little headphone jack. Or I could even just get one from the internet. Now normally I would have silhouetted this out in Photoshop, but I don't want to waste everyone's time. If you double click in your project panel, you can import files or you can go file import file and this is how you bring in photos videos illustrator files so i'm going to bring in that jack and to get into your animation you just drag it down to your timeline now this is too big so i'm going to scale it i'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in and out of my program monitor here all right this is a little bit better uh, let me scale down just a little bit more. I'm using my down arrow to change one number at a time when I had that selected. All right, now I'm going to silhouette this out because I didn't do it in Illustrator. I mean, Photoshop. Let's see. Okay, that's pretty good for now. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the anchor point at the end where it would meet the cord. Like such. I'm going to hit R for rotate. I'm not going to animate this. I'm just rotating it like that. All right, so we've got our paths, we've got our nulls. I'm going to parent this jack to the null for the cord. So what's going to happen now, if I move the null cord, now I have the cord moving, but also watch this. So I'm going to animate this. So I'm going to go from here to there. So the cord moves. And watch this, I'm going to hit Shift R to bring up rotation. So I'm going to click my rotation, go forward. Now the cord jack can rotate, like it's going to plug into something. See? We could also probably drop that cord down a little bit to get a curve in the motion path now like such and then we could have it like it's plugging into something so I'm going to teach you stuff in advance to get your homework done on time like parenting is coming up a little later on and, and Knowles but that's I'm just showing you how you can get some pretty interesting things happening with uh, After Effects pretty quickly. And like I said, I'm recording this so you can all see, like go back to it and see what I did. Like I could go to this chord that we drew and I'm gonna twirl down the shape. I'm gonna twirl down the stroke. And I'm going to want it to look more like a uh, braided cord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add dashes. So I click the plus to add dashes. And I can make them as tight or as loose as I want. And that all still works with my animation. Like such. Adds a little level visual complexity to it rather than just using a straight solid cord. You can change your caps here. You can taper if you want to get a more calligraphic look. All right. We all good for tonight? Like I said, this was just a little bonus thing to show you how you can attach things to your shape paths to get that easy motion rather than having to animate that cord frame by frame, I just attached it to the cord that I drew. I'm gonna go into the lab section. Like I was saying, I think this one might be a little bit easier to do than the others, like, you know, the shoes going through and stuff like that. How much playfulness you add to the characters is what's really going to drive this home. Um, I like, the logo for that whereas this would be a bit more complex um than just simple paths because you got that growing up i mean it's still doable but I, I think the other one's a little bit more fun and playful it's really your choice in what you want to carry out but i'm glad you did more than one idea for a storyboard okay now i see clearly what's going on just watch with having too many um, inanimate objects. <coughs> I get the next Caliber Studios. The sword's going to come in and move a little bit. I've had several students do this type of thing where, you know, the sword goes through the letters. You, you got choices. You could, one thing you could try is having an all black background and some fire. And the fire, you see the silhouette of the letters start to appear and then the sword comes in and this like all lights up and glows. That's one option. Um, another thing I want to 
show you is instead of having caliber rise up, you could have it come out from below the sword. And it's a shorter distance and it'll look more interesting. It'll keep the viewer's eye here. Like if you got the eyes, the eye here, you will try and keep the viewer's eye in one spot. So I think the caliber should drop down. And the studios, uh, we can have that come in however you want. Uh, it really depends upon how good your artwork is. That's what's going to push this animation because it's going to be like a sword flying in and then like a little bit of jiggle with your logo. So it's the interaction of the sword and the text. And uh, I, I don't think the text should drop down. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Um, maybe having fire in the background, seeing that behind the flames. Like, let me show you what that might look like one second. I'll click a new comp here. So if I've got the word next, but I've got the same color as my background, it's going to be invisible. So I'm going to go layer, new, solid. And I'll make this one black as well. Okay. So on here, let me see. That's a bit intense, but this will show you the idea. When something below it lights up, you then see that letter, the letters like it magically appeared. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. If there were like fire behind that, you would see the silhouette of the fire. But this, see how it disappears and then reappears. So some type of light element revealing the text might be a little bit better than having the text drop down. And then the sword could fly in, like jostle a little bit. And then the whole thing glows up and we see the final logo. Like that's just, that's just a thought. But uh, it'd be, it all depends upon your art style. Like if you've got a hand drawn cartoony looking sword, you're going to need a hand drawn cartoony looking fire. You know what I mean? You want, you want to keep your artwork consistent. It is doable. You know, we just got to think about the steps in getting there. Oh, um, so I am no longer contagious. So uh, not this Thursday, but next week I'll be back in the class. I just have to. Well, first I have to write. Um, I have to write the dean and let him know that I had COVID. But I'm also going to say, hey, I no longer have it. And then once they say, yes, you can come back on campus, then I can come back on campus. So I'm going to write them tonight and. uh they, they should say, yeah, you can come back next week. Good. Yeah, because I want to be back on campus. It's much easier to teach in person, but I'll still stream for the people who can't make it. And uh, not only that, but moving forward the entire semester, I'll be recording my lectures and the labs so you can access them, you know, for your your questions later on. So it's really going to help you learn. So it's actually a good thing. Okay, I like the astronaut. You're going to need, if you see more of the astronaut and the limbs moving, you know, that'll be pretty good. The logo might need some more work here, but uh, the, yeah, yeah, the idea is there. Yeah, I mean, this might work. Like I said, if, if we see the astronaut, you know, more of him moving, like the limbs, then that might be pretty good. Uh, this should be a reflection on the helmet. So maybe if there were some distortion to it, like bubbling or something like that, that might be pretty neat. Um, I can show you how to make a star field and gases in outer space and stuff like that to help dress this up as well. So, okay, yeah. Uh, if you are going to do this, look at the videos. Did everyone get the list of videos I sent? that was about like character rigging. So I'm going to show you something real fast. Um, it's like with the character. It 
give it a solid here. And I'll make each part of the limb the same color. Uh, oh, you know what? I could probably change the roundness on this too. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, that's what I'm going to show you. What you're going to want to do, like you'll have, you can draw your guy out, but you're going to want to ultimately have This isn't the world's greatest hand, but I'm just doing this quickly. So you're going to want to have like the shoulder, the forearm, the hand. You're going to want them to all be separate on layers so that you can uh, animate them around. Like uh, if that's the hand... I'm going to parent the hand to the forearm. I'm going to parent the forearm to the upper arm. So what that's going to do, uh, what parenting does, is I can move the whole arm like this. Let me uh, move like that. And then I could also come in and move the other parts to get that finer detail the way it would in real life. Like such. You know what I mean? So you want that flexibility. If you have just one big arm, you're not going to be able to bend it like this. So you want that control. Like the arm would be split up into three different pieces of art. Same with the legs. The torso... Um, select the torso would end you know uh, you want to have rounded corners so that the shapes can move around fine so it'd be like the torso the helmet would be its own layer you know stuff like that so just plan your artwork carefully because your drawing looks nice um, like those cords and whatnot just watch how you know you line up your character so it is doable, you know, like I said, it won't be all that many pieces, especially since the face is going to be covered up. So, uh, and the other thing I was talking about was, um, let me just delete all this. And I don't remember if it was star man or star or whatever. So I'm just going to do the word star man. And then, uh, let's put a little star below it. Um, Clearly, this is not a logo, but I'm just doing this quickly to show the idea. Uh, bu 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 now, we're going to cover this coming up, but an adjustment layer affects everything below it. Okay, it's like an adjustment layer in in After in uh, Premiere. I mean, Photoshop. And you could always get to everything by layer new. So the adjustment layer, if I put an effect on it, like I'll do a blur. Gaussian blur. If I put a blur on that, it's going to affect everything below it rather than having to put it on every layer. So it's just a way of saving time. Uh, so I'm just testing out something real quick. There's a couple effects like lens. See what's happening here? You could have that happening as the astronaut's approaching to get that distortion and you could change the convergence of it yep and also animating the center remember anything with an anchor anything with a stopwatch can be animated you can fake head rotation with this so you've got a lot of pretty 
interesting options here with this effect. So that should be pretty interesting. Yeah, so that's lens. Um, and this is going to be in the recording, so you're going to have that. So lens is one of them. Uh, I think the other one was... It's under distortion, I think. And that's just the effects panel over here. Uh, distort. Bulge. That's the other one, is bulge. See, bulge will take more work. But it's another way of doing it. I think the lens gives you the distortion you would from the astronaut's helmet. All right, any other questions? And like I said, this is what I'm going to do. Each, each week, I'm going to teach each person ahead of when we're covering this stuff so that you'll get your homework done on time and it'll look the way that you want it to. You know, so it's when I see these storyboards, I can get these ideas saying, oh, you're going to need to character rig this. You're going to need these types of effects, and I'll show you all how to use them. And I'm going to go here. We'll go to our syllabus. The first, there's only two homework assignments. You know, so you've really got to manage your time, you know, because you're going to have weeks to work on each one of these. Uh, homework one... You know, I signed it a little early so that you get the idea for it. It's due 0301. So that's when it'll be due. So you've got like a full month to work on it. It's going to be between 7 and 15 seconds long. Actually, while we're talking about it, this is like the resting logo. And um, let's pretend it animated on the screen. You want a little bit of interest. Like, I'm going to do a glow on the star. Okay. And so let's pretend it's done moving, and there's still a few seconds left, because you want the viewer to be able to read it. So there's going to be a couple seconds before your thing ends. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here. I'm just knocking this out quick. So we'll pretend my logo animated on. And you'll see this glow softly flickering like that. That's something to give a little bit of life once your logo's done moving. You know what I mean? Think about things like that, like with your astronaut. You know, there could be like flickering of the lights or the gases in outer space or something. Like there'll be other things still having life and interest to them once the logo is basically in its it's resolved its position that makes sense yeah so think about those types of things little bits of life after your logo's done <clears throat> like with uh sarah's where she had the person sitting on the swing that person could be sitting there like you know gently kicking their feet side to side or or like you know swinging back and forth subtly and it won't be distracting while the logo's rested. There's little things of picking on life and keeping things going, like the swords on the screen. There could be like a glint going across the sword. Let me delete all this. Um, we'll pretend that this is a sword. Boom. There's a sword. Okay. So you could do things like have a light sweep go across it. See, like that. You can have light sweeps run around it after it's done moving. Just add some more life. Yeah, there's lots of possibilities. Yes, all, all the effects are in your effects panel over here on the side. 
And like I said, that's why I want to see your ideas so I can give you some ideas like, you know, light sweep. Um, let me twirl that down again. So right next to your project panel, if you put an effect on a layer, like I just dragged it onto the layer, there's effects controls right next to the project panel. So right here is the light sweep effect. So anything with a stopwatch can be animated. So if I do that, I can pick how fast I want my light sweep to be. And then just hit the space bar to preview it. You know? Anything with a stopwatch can be animated. And you can go in and get your own custom look. Like if I want a wider sweep, I can change all that, like how intense it is on the edge, how thick that light is going to wrap around the width of the light sweep itself. Stuff like that. And not only that, but to see how quickly that added some depth to the flat artwork. So that's just something to consider. Any other questions? While you're thinking of questions, I'm going to do a fast recap. P for position. Got my anchor or my path. I'm going to leave my anchor point there. And I moved it. So there's my motion. Click the word position. Hover over a keyframe. Right click. Keyframe assistant. Easy ease. And let me move these a little closer together because that motion's too slow. There we go. I can click the word position to select both of them. Click on my speed graph. I'm going to magnify it. And I'm going to want this to go slower out of the first and faster into the second. I'm only moving the yellow handle and I'm holding down shift after I click on it. And I'm going to click on speed graph to get out of it. Now let's preview that. See the difference? I could even move this a little closer so it's faster. Messing around with your speed graph is what's going to make your work look more professional. Okay, so in next week's lab, well, actually, I should say during the lecture, we're going to do what all, all animators start off with, and that is the bouncing ball. So tonight we talked about one of the principles of one of the 12 principles of animation slow in slow out which is also easy ease and next week we're going to be learning about squash and stretch so it's going to be fun i should say thursday thursday night any other questions all right looks like we're all wrapped up for tonight then um, just remember your workflow will be this through the whole semester with each layer each part of your thing that you're animating you want to have as many different layers as possible to give yourself full control you know you just get your idea then you move your anchor point based upon the idea you have so if i put this over here in the corner because i want it to like swing around move my playhead to where i want the motion to start click on the stopwatch that i want to animate anything with a stopwatch can be animated remember if you're doing scale you can click off the chain to non-uniformly scale things and with rotation the first number is complete rotation so if i do three it'll be three full rotations whereas the second number is just a specific amount of degrees like such all right well i guess we'll end it here tonight unless anyone else has any other questions Okay, good. And next week, I'm also going to go over Illustrator. Oh, not next week, Thursday night. I'm going to go over Illustrator files, like, you know, importing them. So if you're stronger in Illustrator, you can work in there. And I'll give you these as like a, uh, a heads up for your work. So you can be like, oh, I see how I have to set up this file. So that'll come in okay. But if you do want to start on your artwork early in either Illustrator or Photoshop. I'll show you this real quick, just so that you do it right 
from the get-go because I, I don't like to see people waste their time setting their files up wrong. So this is going to be for Illustrator or Photoshop. When you got your templates, we're going to be using HDV, HDTV 1080. 1920 by 1080, that's what our file size is. So if you click on this, just click once or maybe twice, you're going to have this. And let me zoom out. So this is the same size as the After Effects composition. So if I put a shape in there, this will be this exact size in this exact same spot when you open it in After Effects, just as long as you're using the HDTV template when you're making your Illustrator files. Everyone got that? And one final thing, file, document, color mode. Make sure you're in RGB when you start. RGB. After Effects uses displays like monitors. So CMYK is only for print. Make sure all your artwork this whole semester that you're using is RGB. Okay. Okay, great. I'm glad we had time to cover that. You guys uh, learned the speed graph a lot faster than some other classes. And you picked up on splitting a layer and duplicating a layer. So if I hit Command D, I'll duplicate this. I can slide it down a little bit, change the color. Like such, that's duplicating a layer. And then split duplicate. You just hit Command Shift D. Or you go edit split and it'll split where the playhead is. That's good for when you have to change your anchor point or if you've got an effect on something that you need to stop or start at a certain time. I'll show you what I mean by that. Because some effects just run constantly and that's not what you want. See like this runs constantly. But if I wanted that to happen after my logo resolved itself, that's where split duplicate comes in handy. And I could just delete all that expression beforehand. And then it starts. So that's another useful tip for splitting a layer. Like such. All right. Well, everyone have a great night. I will see you all Thursday. And I'll let you know what the dean says. Um, they should say, yeah, come on back next week. I'll keep you posted on that. Yeah, like I said, I wouldn't come back in if I wasn't feeling better, but I'm feeling I'm feeling really good. So, all right, excellent. I will see you all. We'll do Zoom again because the uh, the chat wasn't working in in uh, YouTube. But I will test that out later on, um, just to make sure. I think I know what button it is. We'll turn on. I mean, they might not even enable chat in a uh, private. Um, streams on YouTube. I got to look that up. So, all right. Have a great night, everyone. I will see you all Thursday at six.